What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Sham back with another Wild Hearts video today, man. Finally, I'm gonna get into my first build. The bow is literally cracked. I, I can't say that enough, it's just cracked. It is the first weapon that I started off playing this game with. Um, then I eventually switched over to Clawblade. Clawblade is my favorite weapon in the game. And that video will be at a later date. I gotta get these videos out fast, fast, fast as possible, man. I'm sorry that it's taking so long. But yeah, man, today we have the Rising Phoenix bow. And I named it that because this motherfucker just can't die. I've set up this build in a different way than everybody else. I, I know that people know this meta, but I haven't seen too many videos on this playstyle when playing the bow. I wanted to make sure when I played the bow and arrow, I wanted to play it at, at a fast pace. I didn't like the task that everybody was trying to complete where they were trying to do the volley and then dodge roll cancel into the vertical attack i i didn't i do that sometimes but i made a bill where you don't have to do that at all you don't have to use the the glider to go up in the air and detonate your shots after the volley you don't have to do any of that shit. and i will explain that now so let's get into it first off let's start with the armor man i'm going to save the weapon for the last thing i talk about i want y'all to watch this video through its entirety you feel me so let's get into the gear i want y'all to know with all of my bills you know hints forward gear just really doesn't matter i said it that i said it in my in my review it just doesn't really matter as much as i would like it to matter everyone's pretty much rocking the same gear but i switched up my gear a little bit from a lot of people that i've been seeing but for the most part man ember plume is just busting right now you feel me it's just the best gear in the game when it comes to doing a lot of things like negating the the roar of the animals and getting solar protection and getting desperation and critical draw and all these cool things on your on your character so today we're going to start off with the gear we have the helmet the garuda hat that's from the ember plume anything garuda is from the ember plume it gives you 10 percent fatigue recovery deaf ears and solar protection at five percent and then you have the garuda yuagi that is the chest piece from the ember plume and this whole gear set this whole build is kimono based i will make a bow build soon i have another one in the background that i've been working on that i want to spec into human path i want to try to at least get my three favorite weapons in the game i want to get builds for them done and i want to go kimono and human path versions of those builds and that way y'all can pick and choose because me personally i like human path more than kimono path but kimono path is kind of busted right now but I enjoy human paths so much more because it allows me to get more thread and get all these cool benefits like if my teammates anybody on my team goes down then I'm able to get hunter's arm without even hunter's arming shit like that human path just dope to me and I think it has more upside in the future than kimono path does that's just my opinion but yeah so with the chest piece you have 26 percent blaze resilience so you can deal with the motherfucking lava backs out there and shit you feel me unless you fighting the cold ball then i'm sorry for you um then you have 15 percent self-control and then you have seven percent desperation and what desperation does it basically allows you to take more damage but your attack is increased like significantly so desperation is one of the main things that people are running right now in this game it just does a lot of damage so if you can stack up on desperation as much as possible on your bills you'll be doing more damage and moving on to the gauntlets i have the garuda gauntlets it has strong arm spirit which i don't really use that much at five percent it has critical draw at five percent and it has desperation at seven percent critical draw uh boosts the chance of unleashing critical hits for a while on drawing your weapon so anytime you draw your weapon on this build you'll get an extra five percent critical draw isn't that crazy but it is nice because you do get a lot of crits with the bow because you're just spamming the volley you feel me and then this is kind of where i switch it up to where I'm, I wanted this build to have more survivability and I wanted it to be able to be a one heal and get back into the fight type of build. And there's a lot of ways that you can take this and put your own spin on it. And we'll talk about that further in a little bit. But basically I went with the Mayotara loincloth. It comes with 16% core boost. Core boost just basically gives you, you know, it increases your max stamina. 
And then you have stowed weapon ironclad, which that's just some more defense when you stow your weapon. So when your weapon's not out, you take less damage. And then we have bridge burning, which bridge burning is so, 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 so slept on. And the reason why I have it is because this bill really can't die. And it's sometimes in this game, it feels like everyone only wants to fight the monster at full health, full HP. And that's really kind of how you play this game. But I play this game to get in the most amount of volleys and the most amount of damage on bow in quick succession so i'm not really worried about dying so there are cases where i'm at you know 50 hp or 25 hp and i'm able to zip and dip around off the celestial anchor and get this massive buff to my damage using bridge burning so it's one of the main things that i do but i also heal you know what i'm saying Motherfuckers got a heal out here, bro. It is it is nice when you have someone on your team with a healing vaporizer with this build. If you got a, a friend that got healing vaporizer and they're a good healer and they constantly popping that shit off, oh my God, you can just go crazy with the bow because you don't really have to worry about healing. So if you combine that build with this build, it's going to be nuts. But bridge burning boosts attack and defense with waning health. I love it. I love it. And now we have the Jade Dance Sonate. However you pronounce it as my as as my boots man and it gives me 23% recovery boost with 33% death well so basically anytime that I get hit I get 23% more recovery boost when I pop a potion to get my health back so sometimes I'll I'll be down to like 30% and I can jump out real quick pop one heal back to full health back into the fight and then death well allows a 33% more extension on people being able to pick you up after you die. So if you somehow die on this build, which I've died on this build, I'm not saying that you can't die, but for the most part, you can't die, my guy. If you die is is on this build, it is purely your fault. You have to play strategically, but you really you have so much freedom on this build. You don't have to sit in one spot. And even when you do the dodge roll cancels, I have things on this build that help you with that if you decide to play that play style as well. But that death well gives you that extra safety blanket to the point where if someone is trying to heal you they don't have to be in a rush they have 33 percent more time to get you back into the fight and so i love the jade dance boots they they're just they're just something i fuck with and most people probably don't run them but i do you might be noticing that like oh sham you don't have any resurrection you know what i'm saying how, how can this bill not die well i do have resurrection so i'm one of the only people that aren't running the boots with resurrection and tangle recovery and all that bullshit on this build i hate running those those boots i really i really do because the only people, only reason why people is really running it is because of the resurrection. But resurrection is the talisman. You know what I'm saying? You can get resurrection on a talisman. So I guess we'll move into that after the gear. We'll talk about the talismans. As you know, or as you can see on this build, I only have three talismans. I have the elemental talisman, the tiny charm, great secure, and the pause. The Pauls, the Pauls Cross Rosary. I'll show y'all exactly what they do. And the Pauls Cross Rosary is what you need in order to get resurrection on your build without having to use it in your gear. So I have the safety blanket of recovery boost. I have the safety blanket of death well, and I have the safety blanket of resurrection. So yes, I'm stacking desperation and I'm taking more damage when I get hit, but I'm able to pop one heal off, get back into fights off of recovery boost. I have death well for if I do die, and I have resurrection to negate taking that fatal hit when I have no help. So yeah, this is why my build's a little different because I get to do a little a little bit more things and I know yeah you could get more stats off your talismans but as you can see I have my build set up to the point where I got all the stats that I want deaf ears I have solar protection I have critical draw I have I have all these things on my my actual build that way I don't need to spec into all of these different talismans and get like dodge booth and, and sidestepper si dodge boost and sidestepper and all that type of stuff because the dodges on bow are already kind of cracked I think do dodging on the bow is the best dodge in the game so you really don't need dodge boost boost and all these other things so i have resurrection i have freezing recovery and one stroke fury and one stroke fury boost attack for a while on destroying parts of a monster when you're playing bow you're always destroying parts you're literally setting minds up in a monster and you're just detonating it my guy so at the end of the day 
hit those weak spots, you'll get more attack power. So hit those weak spots as much as possible. And when they break, you do even more damage. And then we have my last talisman, the Tiny Charm Great Secure. If you haven't found this talisman, go find this talisman. It gives you an extra 14% of knocking marvel and knocking marvel reduces the time required for bow bolstering. If you decide to play the sidestepping, you know, or if you, you might not have any celestial anchor thread at the moment, knocking marvel is really great for this build because it allows you to bolster way faster. And I have an extra 14% on my talisman, but I have more. I have more. Just wait. That is the gear and the talismans. Let's move on to what y'all came here for. No. I apologize. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to talk about the basic card, Kiri, first. This is, in my opinion, the best setup, the most mandatory setup for this build. Regardless, the main thing you need to have is Celestial Anchor, and it is this one. Basically, I have Core Boost to increase my stamina, but I also don't really worry about stamina too much outside of having enough stamina on my volley. You want to be able to get as many arrows in as possible, but the Celestial Anchor is what's causing me to not have to do these dodge roll cancels to get my big detonation on the monster. I'm able to use the car, the, the Celestial Anchor and jump off of it and negate the bolstering like it completely skips, bypasses the, the whole process of bolstering when you jump off a celestial thread and hit r2 and shoot the monster when you land back to the ground all you do is press square seconds before you land land on the ground and it switches you into the horizontal stance for bolstering you know without bolstering for the volley so you're able to get your volley right off of the celestial anchor when you land on the ground go straight into the volley right before you run out of stamina you hit R1 and X to jump again. And then once you jump again, it's just a rinse and repeat cycle until the monster is dead. So Celestial Anchor is the most important thing on this build. I use stakes and I use the fire and I use the boxes. So as you can see, this is my setup. I basically have Bulwark, I have the Cannon, I have Firework, Chain Trap, Celestial Shield, and Healing Vaporizer. I played with using the, the uh, glider, but I mean, I, I really don't think you need the harpoon and stuff as much on this build. I feel like having the trap, catching them in the trap to do a volley into a celestial cannon is nasty. You have the bulwark still there just in case you don't have a thread. That's something cheap to make that you can literally jump on top of that and get your uh get your first shot off and go into volley and then you have celestial shield which this is the most important thing in this whole setup. So when you do this, you're able to get off. So say if I want to go horizontal, I'm able to get this off. And if a monster hits me, if a monster hits me at all in this dodge roll, that's iframes. If he still hits me, that shield is going to take priority and negate that attack from that monster. So this is the main thing that I build. I build Celestial Anchor to jump all around the place and go straight into volley. And see, by that time, I've still I've still got my stamina back and I still can jump. So when I jump, look what's, look what's happening. I already have my stamina back. And then straight into volley. And I, I get to just rinse and repeat it over and over and over. I have my stamina back already into volley. So you can kind of see why Celestial Anchor basically turns this weapon into a a freaking bazooka minigun it's just super easy and you don't have to worry about doing dodge cancel rolls you can still do that you can you know you can still set up uh gliders if you have a glider you can still set up a glider and jump in the air like that and shoot but i'm telling you this is the meta this is the meta i didn't create this i i, I found out about it without even watching anybody i just figured it out myself but this this should be the meta. This is how you should play both, just like this. Um, so that's the importance of your basic card of carries. And the main thing you want to worry about is having your your celestial shields out, having your your bulwarks out, having your chain traps out, and then having this out. And literally, you're gonna be getting healing over time from that vaporizer while you're doing all of this. So if you do decide to dodge roll cancel into a shot and you get hit, you still have overtime healing from that vaporizer. So that's the importance of the basic card of Kiri. 
Now for what y'all have been waiting for. The most important aspect to any build in Wild Hearts is the weapon. So let's talk about it. We ended up on the Tempest Bow Skanda, which has the highest DPS in the game as far as bows go. The reason why I chose this bow was because it is the highest DPS and still managed to give us 5% extra crit. And it has extreme archery, which inhibits stamina loss with arrow based attacks at 30%. You can't pass that up. And then if I do decide to bolster at any moment, I have 40% knocking Marvel. Remember I told you I have 14 extra on my talisman. So I have 54% knocking Marvel in total. And then Broken Beast Screaming Arrow boosts the power of Resonant Atoy attacks when the bow is at maximum enhancement. Well, I'm always at maximum enhancement. Why? Because I'm jumping off Celestial Anchor to get into my volleys. So it just makes the most sense to run this on your bow. And so a total I have 30% Extreme Archery. I have Fusion Reaper, even though I really don't care about that. We have 12% Critical Chain, which that can change. That's up to you. I love Critical Chain, but that's pretty much the, the, the go-to when it comes to the weapon. And so when you look at it, I started here. I went 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 here. This is where I got my Critical Chain from. And then I bypassed Water Will. And then I got this Broken Beast Screaming Arrow right here. Bypassed Fog Fall. Got the Extreme Archery. Got the Knocking Marvel. Skipped Leeway. And here we are. This is what the bow is consisting of. And I, I fuck with the bow a lot because you don't have to weave all through this tree to get a crazy bow there are different versions that you can build but this version of this bow does mad damage and it might not be the most damaging you know because i have things on for survivability but i wanted to make a rising phoenix type of bow player i wanted to be fast be agile be a ticking time bomb at any point and i just can't die i'm the annoying person that's hunting the monster and that's what i wanted to get with my overall goal of this build so it, it's not super hard to build this this bow take your time build it and enjoy it man this has been your boy sham I, i'm pretty sure i didn't leave anything out you feel me this is the build enjoy it have fun on it let me know what you think down in the comments when you get the chance to try it out hell let me know what your bow is like and what your setup is and see how different it is from mine and let me know you know what it is and i might try it out for myself man but if y'all like this type of content make sure y'all leave a like on the video Make sure y'all comment, make sure y'all subscribe, and most importantly, turn on those notifications so you don't miss another banger, banger video, you dig? It's been your boy Sham. Remember, man, I fuck with you because you fuck with me. And if you don't fuck with me, then finish that, bruh. I'ma catch y'all in the next one. Peace.